Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylitchfromstudios.co.uk and in today's video we're going to look at the input filter as part of our node effects series and uh, the input filter is pretty cool. It's a very very simple utility and uh, essentially all it is is it's, it is a MIDI filter. So you can filter by uh, range of the keyboard or you can filter out by velocity. So you can filter out anything that is below a minimum velocity, or you can filter by notes above a certain maximum velocity. So the moment I have set this, this to maximum 100, this minimum zero, and I've got a nice sort of five or six octave range of the keyboard. which means nothing is getting filtered out. But what I can do is I can grab this bar here, and when I grab this bar, it moves it. Um, but I can also use the key range here, so I can set this down to sort of C3, and let's say I set this one, I'm going the wrong way, I set this one to say C1, there we go, C1 to C3. And now I get into this grayed out area. I'm pressing the keys on the keyboard, as you can see, but no notes are coming through. As you can see up here on the meters here, when I play a note, you get metering here. But if I play a note over here, Nothing happens. You don't get anything. It gets the MIDI data for note on, note off gets completely filtered out altogether. And then you can just move this around. So if you decide you've got a nice sort of um, two, three octave range, you can just move that to any point on the keyboard. And uh, this is completely expandable. So you can expand it out. You can move it to wherever you want. And you can set the key range to wherever you want that to be. So. Um, I'm happy with setting that to C0, but maybe I want to go a little bit higher on the keyboard. I can set that to C6. And there, I've got a nice seven octave range, which most keyboards should have if they're like 88 keys. And so that's what that will do. So let's ex uh, explore this velocity thing. So if I set this down to about, say, 78%, if I press the keys really hard, you can probably hear me thumping away on my keyboard over the mic. Some of those notes that are above that 78% are being filtered out. So not all of those notes are coming through. So if I set that back to 100%, and then you can do the same here. I can set that up to say, I don't know, 29%. If I play really, really soft. As you can see, not all of those notes were being played, uh, even though I was playing them in the um, the lit up area here. Because I was playing quieter than 29%, you couldn't hear them. They were being filtered out. So this uh, does have um, some uses and some practical applications. Um, but to be perfectly honest, it's not something I have ever used. So I'm exploring this for the first time um, I've spent a little bit of time with it before making this video, but other than that, I don't really use it. So this is my first time of actually trying it out and seeing what it does. So if you want to filter out uh, notes um, below a certain velocity, or you want to set the keyboard range so that you can only use a particular range of your keyboard for um, making your um, music, uh, then the input filter is probably what you would want to use in this case. So this is a real short video. Uh, as part of this note effects series, it's probably the shortest one that we've done so far. 
The next video will focus on how you can combine the different note effects together to, to make something really creative. So we can combine the, um, the repeater and the quarter and the arpeggiator together in different ways to create something unique and cool and interesting. And then the next video after that, we will um, try creating some actual music with um, these note effects and see what we can come up with. So maybe some fake rhythm guitar parts, we'll generate a fake bass part, and maybe we'll put in some big band music and stuff like that. We'll just have lots of fun with it. All right, so I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.